That one, innit? That one. Been a while, ladies and gents. Back on the stream now. Been ill. Had a bit of a cold, hence them. But we're back on it. Right, what we're doing today, review array map. Uh, array maps, or whatever they are, on um, the React course, Airbnb, Clone, Learn and React. I think this is just going to be learning about this map method and array, hence the title there. Let's share the screen and let's get on with it. There we go. Let's make that big. Let's get me over there. Where am I? I'm there. There we go. Right, let's get cracking. What you got for us, Bob? There's basically a spoiler. Not through there. Let's get the audio through my AirPods. So it's been a while. Right. Spoiler alert for what we're about to learn. Because we are going to see how we can use the array.map method to take regular JavaScript data and turn it into JSX elements that can be displayed. Fuck. Why is the audio just the screen. And Ugh. It's literally just switched to my audio on my, my AirPods. Start again. And so this felt like a really natural time to do a quick review of the dot map method. If it's been a while or you're feeling a bit hazy about the dot map method, you can click the screenshot here. That will take you to the MDN docs on the map method. And I would just recommend going through reading everything they have, playing with the interactive demos they have and everything like that to help bring you up to speed on dot map. So what we'll be doing is a series of challenges. Quick, quick pause there. I just thought it was a bit weird, this bit where he's just assumed that you know about the dot map method of an array. He just said, if you're a bit hazy about it, well, well, yeah, <laughs> never done it before. So I think you should have just gone through it there rather than just assuming, you know, what this method is, map method is. But anyway, I've been through it, but that's my two penneth, what it's worth. Challenges. I've got three challenges here, but instead of just going through everything in one go, I'm going to have you do challenge one first, then we'll go through it together, then challenge... Oh. Challenge two, go through it together, then challenge three. Remember, the goal is to look at our input data and try to turn it into some output data using the dot map method. So pause now and start working on challenge one. Okay, as I'm a bit hazy, by hazy, never done it in my fucking life. But I've read the MDM docs, like you said, and that's why I keep looking across. Right, so we're creating a new array. So const right, given given an array of numbers return the array of each number squared. Let's call it squared nums. New array. Into that we are feeding the old array. One. Pulling the dot map method on array there. Comes. Okay. Open brackets. Brackets. So we're going to take in a parameter. This function is going to be using arrow functions. We've been reading up about that with an arrow function. Don't have to put the function keyword in. And I think as this is an anonymous function, i.e. without a name, or call that function, whatever you want to call it. You don't have to give it a name, you just give it the first parameter. Now on a an arrow function, if you have two parameters. Put them in brackets like one, two. But if there's only one parameter, we have to put one 
got to put brackets in. So, as you say, num. So, this is going to be each one of these. So, it's going to go num, 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 num singular. So, this is the arrow function syntax. No, it isn't. That is. You don't even have to type return and all your gubbins in there. Yes. Shits and giggles. Return statement. Basically, anything after that arrow function is the equivalent. It's kind of the body of the function. So you do your squiggly brackets, have all your crap in there. You don't need that arrow function. You don't need this. But let's just get it working with the return to start with, and then we'll tidy it up in a minute. Right. So what do we need to do square. Square each number, so it's just number times two. That's not working, so put them in there. Hmm, I love it. Don't mind the return. Maybe maybe you can't mix return into arrow functions. Just bring it all up. So we're creating the new array there. Calling the map method on the existing array there. We're taking in one number. It's a parameter, so we're going through. So it's what this is saying is, for every one of these, go through it and perform this function. These, this is the function instructions. So it's taking the number and times it by two. This should work. Now oh, we need to look at the console, don't we? <laughs> it's not everything. That's good. Let's log it. Logged anything. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, it's doubled each number. So let's let's times it by three. For that. Apologies for all the profanities all of it today. Right, that's worked. Challenge two then. Given an array of strings, return an array where the first letter of each string is capitalized. Right, so let's just do the same thing again. I'm going to create a new array. Um capped names capped so that let's reference this let's run a map function on it parameter single name the parameter rather and let's run the arrow function this is what we want to do All right so how do you capitalize hmm think about this Zoom me in a bit. Can you do that? 
zoom on my head's a bit small, but we can do that in the middle of a stream. No. No. Right, so for one of them, I want to just write that to the screen. It works when you can do it like this. Or readable while you're messing about. So that's iterating through and it's just printing the last one. So I guess will this work? No, never. That parameter and it's printing it. So it's looping through, it's, it's printing the last one. So, can we find a capitalized function to do that? So, let's go into Google. Let's give you another screen, a Google screen. Oh, to capitalize. Yes. It's all this crap. <laughs> so just copy it, see what happens. Some of the answers modify things. Now let's just copy that. Go back to my top parameter, wasn't it? String doesn't like this, does it? Oh, you don't need return, get rid of that, don't need that. Don't need return because it's an arrow function. Right, so that's, no, that's the parameter, isn't it? Will that work? This will just apply it to Danielle. String is not defined. So that needs to be name as well, doesn't it? Name. Hmm? What? <laughs> Pretty numbers. Well, let's get rid of that. I wonder. Yes, there we go. Right, I don't really understand what's going on there, but that's not 
Let's not split hairs over that. So I've done the first one. Given the array of strings, return array where the first letter of each string is capitalized. So I've technically done it, but how do I print each one? I've not done, um, you need to loop round and print each part of the array. Uh, something uh, no. console log no okay Let's... the cogs in the pea brain working that's that works What if we log names capped? just want something like this so that represents name and it loops through every single one I'm complaining about so that's the array that's doing its stuff Why doesn't it want to do that? I have to get some help from Bob. All oh, right, there we go. Return an array where the first letter of each string's capitals. Right, I've done it. I think that's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> Watch Bob at the end. Right, give an array of strings. Give an array of strings. Return an array of strings that wraps each of the original strings in a HTML like P tag. Okay. Okay. Let's just wrap a P around each one of these. Okay. Pokemon. I've no effing idea about Pokemon. But that's what we're dealing with. So I guess those are names of Pokemon things. Let's call it Pokemon. Uh, wrapped. And that's the new array based on this array, which is called. On. That method on it. The one parameter, click mon. Arrow function. What are we returning then? Why is it moaning about that already? Is it because there's nothing in there? So 
So we need to wrap P tags. We need to wrap P tags around each bit. So let's go back to my good friend Google, find out how to do it. <laughs> how to That's what we need, is it? Query. I think I'll be dying to death soon if it hasn't already. Um, how to wrap items around text content, maybe. Right, text content of a time. What we want. We have the following HTML. I would like to wrap the text content of this span. So I guess that's what the same. Oh shit, look at all this. Surely it'll be simpler than that. I'll trap HR substrings in tags. Right, yes, this should be it. No. Um, no. How to wrap it's not a wrap text. Wrap text. Mm -hmm. Am I writing this wrong? I'll try part of a text now with JavaScript, man, that might be it. Oh, Jesus, look at all that. That's sod it, Bob can show me. We've wasted enough time here. I get the concepts, though, of array mapping, I think. Is it going to be something simple? Shall I have a go? Go on then. Um, right, so we've got Not sure that looks like mon a single. Mon, what do we want to do with it? Oh, The HTML thing. Googling it, can't be left in the screen again. Uh, 
No, it's not, is it? HTML. All right, come on, Bob. You're going to have to show me. Let's see the rest. Takes a callback function, and I'm going oh, to use a function. Audio gone. I can't hear you, Bob. Function declaration, just for now, to better understand exactly what's going on here. And this callback function. This is doing my head in. Sorry, I'm just looking at the sound preferences. It's on. Function is going to. That's working. Audio switch to iPhone. To run for every item in. Jesus Christ. Think about this, guys. My array oh, that I'm beat. running dot map on. Apple piece of shit. Right, plan B. Don't like wearing these too big. Right, I'm gonna have to route the audio through this uh, with. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is run nums.map. Dot map takes a callback function, and I'm going to use a function declaration just for now to better understand exactly what's going on here. And this callback function is going to run for every item in my array that I'm running dot map on. And then whatever I return from this function, so I'm going to add a return inside here, whatever I return from this function will get placed at the same index as the original item with whatever kind of modification we make to it. And then in the end, dot map returns a brand new array that will be the exact same length as the original array. And so we should probably be saving that. Let's say const and these are squares so we'll say squares is equal to the array that comes back from calling nums.map and then this function will be taking a look at every item or probably better is to say it's going to look at each number or num inside of the original array and then we will have it return num times num that'll give us the square of that number now if i console log squares we should get our output of 1 4 9 16 and 25 in an array and sure enough, there it is. Okay, let's move on to challenge two. I'm gonna comment out this console log. This time, given an array of strings, return an array where the first letter of each string is capitalized. At this point, you might be recognizing we're essentially just doing some JavaScript algorithm challenges here. Obviously, do a quick search on Google if you need to. So now it's your time again. Pause and work on challenge number two. I did do a quick search on Google. Found out how to do it. Well, let's set everything up. We'll say maybe capitalized. It's not really capitalized, but I think you get the idea. We'll run names.map. And this time I think I will use an arrow function. Whether or not you're really familiar with arrow functions, I think by now it's probably time that you become versed in arrow functions. So I'm going to use that syntax. And over time, I think you'll just get used to it the more you see it. I'll start out by opening up the body of this function and using a return, but then we'll use some of the benefits of an arrow function by removing some of these extra characters that we don't need. Now, this function is going to be looking at each of the names inside of the names array, so we'll call it name. And like I mentioned, now we're essentially just doing a JavaScript algorithm challenge. So I'll say we want to return, and we can actually index into strings as if they were an array. So I'm gonna say, get me the first character of this name, and we'll call dot to uppercase. And then I bet many of you came across the dot slice method. So I'm going to use name dot slice starting at index one. Now, if I don't provide a second parameter, it means just start at index of one, or in other words, the second character of the string and get me everything from that point until the end. Honestly, I'm winging it a little bit, so we'll see if this is working. I'm going to console log capitalized and let's run it and see how we did. Okay, that looks awesome. Great, now that brings us to challenge number three. And this is the one that's really intended to prepare us to understand how we can use the dot map method alongside JSX in React to turn regular JavaScript data into something that gets displayed on the screen by React. 
This time you have another array of strings. We have a few different Pokemon names here. And your job is to use the dot map method to return a new array of strings. This time the strings are kind of like HTML strings where they're surrounded with these paragraph tags, opening and closing tags. Keep in mind, we are not doing anything React specific. There's nothing special about putting the paragraph elements or the paragraph tags around the text that you want but this will be very similar to what we do when it comes time to do this in React. So there is something special about it because I can't remember how to do it. So don't talk yourself down, Bob. So we'll pause now and work on challenge number three. Mm, just some sort of string manipulation method. I've just forgotten. All right. Hopefully you found that was maybe even easier than challenge number two. Let's start off by creating a new variable. Maybe let's call it paragraphs. And we'll set that equal to the array that comes back from calling pokemon.map. And this time let's use an arrow function again. I'm going to look at every single, well, let's see. I think Pokemon is both the singular and the plural form of Pokemon. So maybe we'll just call Stupid example. I was using mon like I did. Call this mon for individual monsters. And let's start out by opening the body of this function like we did before, and then I think we'll go through and clean up some of our arrow function extra characters that we have. So I'm going to return, and essentially all I'm doing is taking the string of my individual monster, mon, and surrounding it with the paragraph opening and closing tags. So I'll use a template string here, and we'll put in our paragraph tags like this, but then in the middle, I will just inject the... I knew it was something simple like this. I was overthinking it. Individual string of the Pokemon. And now if we console log paragraphs, okay, we get an array of, well, they're still just strings, but they look kind of like paragraph elements. Awesome work. Now, if I wanted to clean up my arrow functions, I only have one parameter, so I don't need those parentheses surrounding there. And then I could take advantage of my implicit return by moving up the return value here and getting rid of my curly braces. And sure enough, that's much more concise. I can do the same thing up here. Now this return value is a little bit longer, so you can decide whether or not you actually want to do this, but I can put that up on the next line. Or if you want to use the next line, you can surround your return value in parentheses and then start that on the next line and that should work just fine too. Let's just double check that. Okay, looking great. In fact, I suspect that these aren't actually necessary in the first place. Yeah, I guess the parentheses really aren't that necessary. I think I like them there just for maybe my own sake in keeping things balanced, but you can do it however you want. Okay, now that we've reviewed array.map, we should be perfectly primed to jump right into the next lesson. Which is, he says, um, React renders React renders arrays. Now this isn't showing up on my screen there because I think there's a bug in Melon in my studio mode, and I'm hoping it's there on the video. But they need to fix this if it's not there. Um, we're on a roll now, so I want to go straight on to this next lesson, uh, which is uh, React renders arrays lesson 17 in the series. So let's get going. Come on, Bob, let's do it. I think now is probably a good time to remember that JSX just returns a regular JavaScript object. We can see that if I were to set, let's say a new variable called element equal to some JSX and we'll say just an H1. And then if I console log element, what we actually get back is just a plain old JavaScript object. The properties and the shape of this object get determined by React in order to describe the element that React eventually will be turning into a real DOM node that shows up on our screen. But the reason that I mention this is because when you get deeper and deeper into web development and actually programming in general, you'll discover that most arrays don't end up being an array of simple strings like we sometimes use for examples like this. Instead, it's probably most common to find arrays end up being an array of objects. Let's keep this example simple. We'll say it's a first name and a last name in this object. That's because data is usually a lot more complicated than just what can be represented by a simple string. And so we use objects to represent pieces of data in a lot more detail. 
Well, there's a little special feature of React, and that is that if we provide an array into what we're rendering from our component, React will know how to essentially map over that array and turn it into elements. Let me clean some of this up and show you a little bit more what I mean. Let's say we create this array of colors, and I'm just going to put in the colors of the rainbow. Of course, I just got done mentioning that usually we don't have an array of strings, but this is just to illustrate a point. Inside of my return, when I'm returning the elements that I actually want to put on the page, I can give React this array and let it render it to the page. Now, I can't just say colors because then it's going to put the actual word colors on there, so I'll surround it in curly braces. And now, essentially, what it's going to do is copy this. Basically, I could have just done this in its place. So we'll take this one step at a time. Let's look at oh. it this way. Now, obviously, this is not beautiful, and we can tell already that it's essentially just putting these together as blank text. I haven't taught React that I want these to be paragraphs or headers or ordered lists or anything like that. Now, of course, if I do want to use my variable colors up here, I can essentially just put colors here. And I still, of course, need my curly braces here. When I hit save, I get the same result. But now I want you to do a little challenge to experiment with what will happen if you change these from strings into JSX elements. Okay, simple enough. I just want you to essentially change these strings into JSX elements. And I said H3, you can do whatever element you want. Then I want to make sure that you hit save or refresh and see exactly how what we have currently changes when you do that. Pause the screencast and work on this challenge. Turn the strings in the array into H3 elements instead. What do you mean? Means must be. I don't know what he means. Turn the strings into all oh, right, yeah. that's what he means, right? Yeah, fine. That's the colors array with H3 elements in it. Okay. Is that what you meant, Bob? Okay, maybe this is getting into the realm of busy work, but let me do this really quick. Okay, let's see what happens when I hit save. Awesome. Now I actually got a list of JSX elements that are being displayed as H3s. In some ways, it's kind of like React took the elements here and just copied and pasted them onto the screen. Of course, I would need to get rid of all these commas for that to work correctly, but I get the same result this way. But let's put it back to colors so that it works the way it's supposed to work. Okay, now we are poised to take what we just talked about and reviewed with dot .map and what we just learned about where React can render an array of JSX elements and put those concepts together which will allow us to, instead of hard coding our data directly into our components like we're doing here, instead we can get data from outside of our little system, map over it, and render a new component for every piece of data. In other words, in the next screencast, we're going to see a jokes.js file, which has essentially the same thing, but in a JavaScript array of objects. Then we'll get to pull those in and map over them, create an array of JSX elements, and then render those to the screen. So when you're feeling ready, let's go forward. Mapping components. Which is this lesson. Might as well just go on. Go on, eh? It's four minutes. Yeah, it's all part of the... Part of the same series. Let's Let me go. walk you through a couple of changes I've made to the code that we were just looking at. Of course, you probably noticed I moved all of our hard coded joke components outside of our component here and just commented them out so we can still reference them. 
I've also changed our jokes.markdown file into a jokesdata.javascript file. Now, we're not quite ready to make API calls and then make use of the data that comes back. So I'm going to be kind of mimicking that with this jokes.js file that's exporting an array of these joke objects. Over in our app.js, I'm going to import the jokes, I'll say jokes data from that file dot slash jokes data. And we can see that if I console log jokes data, I should get the array of jokes. Okay, great. Now combining what we just learned with dot map and with creating an array of JSX elements, I can put those two concepts together. What I'm going to do is create a variable, let's call it joke elements. And this is going to be not an array that I'm defining right now, but instead the array that gets returned when I call jokesdata.map. Inside of my dot map, I'm going to take a look at each one of my joke objects and what I can return, I'll do this on its own line just so we can see a little more clearly what's happening. I'm going to return a joke component. However, I can pass the data from this individual joke object to my joke component. So maybe this is a good opportunity for you to put on your thinking cap and do a quick little challenge. Your challenge is to see if you can pass the props to our joke component in the correct way. And then of course, render our joke elements array so that when you're all done, all of our jokes show up on the page again. Pause the screencast and see if you can complete this challenge. Um, I had spinning a bit now. I'm going to stop the video, do this in a separate vid, because that was very complicated. All right, we'll come back to this, uh, the mapping components bit, uh, on the next vid. Give me brain a quick break. Right, see you in the next vid. Bye.